Okay. We're going to look at some of the parts of the piston. We have the combustion bowl, all right, or the combustion surface. In this case, this is a Mexican hat, and the depth and the shape of this is kind of uh, designed along the, the look of a, a Mexican uh, sombrero. Um, as we move down from the top of the combustion surface to where the top of the uh, uh, first com compression ring would be is referred to as the headland volume. This entire space from from this top surface down to the bottom of the oil control ring groove is referred to as the ring belt. This ring belt it should be reminded you uh, remind you that is slightly smaller in diameter than the skirt from side to side and the reason for that is it is the rings that are in contact with the cylinder uh, in this ring belt portion and not uh, not the portion of the piston itself on the piston the the, these are referred to as lands and in between each land is a groove that the ring sits in. Now this uh, piston actually has a, a couple of additional ring uh, grooves in it um, than the, that more than the standard piston. The skirt at this point here is typically where we would take our measurement. Um, some manufacturers are very specific in where you measure the diameter of the piston. They may give you a specific measurement from the uh, bottom of the oil control ring groove down to where they want it. But as a general rule, if you do your measuring at the center of the uh, wrist pin, it's usually a pretty good spot. Now the reason that they are are concerned about where you would measure it on this this skirt is that as this skirt goes down it tends to flare out a little bit and it's not a perfect uh, cylinder and the reason for that is that this is what keeps my piston from tipping in the bore so uh, this this will run true to, with the cylinder on the way up all right The wrist pin in this piston is referred to as a full floating wrist pin, which means that it is not mechanically connected to the connecting rod or the piston. If we remove the snap ring, each side. we can simply push it out. I say simply. Once that wrist pin is out, we can separate the connecting rod from the piston. I want to have a look here. You will see that this pin boss is where the, the, the wrist pin rides. All right. Um, we're going to have a look at this a little closer. This wrist pin is a, a perfect cylinder and the hole on the inside is actually a true cylinder as well. Uh, there are some where I'll, and I'll draw it up on the board um, which are tapered uh, and that is simply just to reduce the weight at the end of the, the piston. So here's a look at the two connecting rods, or two styles of connecting rods. Um, the one on this side is cut square up on each side and it will go into, and this was, it is to basically a traditional old style connecting rod. This one on that's a little bigger, and, and you'll find this design on most of the new engines, is a trapezoidal connecting rod, and that trapezoidal happens on the small end where the wrist pin fits in. Now the reason that we use that is that when we connect that, and I'm going to leave the skirt off so you can see, 
when we connect that to my piston, what we end up with is, and you have to think that when my piston is being forced down, we're driving, we're, we're expanding a lot of force downward, all right? But that means that on this portion of, of that journal, that it is actually going to spread that force over a greater area. We transfer that force then into the wrist pin. The wrist pin then is transferring that force over a greater area here as well and, and all the way down to my, my crankshaft. What that allows me to do is have a greater surface area on each level when I'm pushing down as opposed to this one where I simply, you know, I'm going to push down and I'm going to spread all of the, the force on a very narrow area uh, on, along here and, and the same on my, on my pin bosses on the piston. Okay, let's have a look at, at some of the uh, variations in, in connecting rods as well. Alright, when you're looking at a connecting rod, uh, we have the cap and the connecting rod. Um, when you look at them, you will find that um, on each of them they will have a set of uh, notches. Uh, now there may be two, and in the, in the case of this, you may have two on one and one on the other. What that notch is there for is to identify that those two uh, pieces go together in that orientation. The rule is that the uh, notches always go on the same side. So, and I mean uh, that they would go like that. Uh, it, it identifies that it identifies that as being the way that it should be located. Uh, I have seen some where uh, people have inverted the cap and uh, when, when it's installed in the engine simply because maybe something was added onto the bottom here and it will catch on a, uh, a spot on the block because it wasn't designed to be placed that way. When you install the bearing the tab on the bearing is designed to fit into the notch. All right, that is only for locating it in the correct position. All right, the tab on the other half of the bearing will go in to the connecting rod. And then you simply always look, make sure that the two tabs are on one side and then place them together. When you, uh, I'm going to put the nuts on here so it won't fall apart. Usually on the side of the connecting rod or the side of the cap, there may be some mark or some kind of an indication to tell you that um, what position that is. And you can see this one has a number six on it. So that identifies it as being in number six cylinder. This cap is a little different in that it is an offset cap. All right, so it has the split in it, but it is not on even sides and it will only fit together one way. We have a tab on one side and a groove designed to, to allow it to mate. Now with this, style, if I can get it to stay and go without the bolts in it. With this style, the purpose of having this offset cut allows it so that there's, reduces the strain on the studs or the bolts that are holding it together. When you look at this as going up and down, when we get to the bottom, there's no direct pull across this way. It is simply uh, locked in and, and, and reduces the amount of 
force that those bolts have to handle. All right. Um, this one also machined. Uh, you will see that on the bearing there is a hole in the center. I guess I shouldn't say center, it's off to one side. That um, hole is to allow oil to run from the crankshaft up to the wrist pin in the engine. When you look here, you will see that there is a slight, there is a hole drilled through here. We would call this a rifle drilled hole, and it, it travels up through to the center of the wrist pin. That is how that wrist pin gets lubrication. All right. Um, what I would caution you to is that when you are working with these, um, what what do you think would be the uh, lifespan if you put that bearing in backwards and block that hole? These are critical in that they are positioned the right way. You again, once again, you can see that there is a tab here, and the tab on the bearing, when it is installed together in the right spot, that hole lines up. So here is an example, I'll hold it up pretty close so you can see, there is absolutely nothing on that side on the flat here uh, in any kind of information. On the opposite side, you can see that there is uh, a whole bunch of information on this side. You will find that there is matching numbers between the bottom and the top, or the top and the bottom half, and you can see that somebody is, has, has put an X. On, on both halves as well. Now, that identifies that this connecting rod goes together. It means that when it, it was machined, these two parts were put together and the hole was, was machined out to a perfect size for that, that engine. Um, the other information that you can take from this, and you will often find it in the manual, is that manufacturers will tell you which side of the engine that that information goes to so that you do not install the connecting rod or the piston backwards. Uh, and again, there can be little uh, changes in, the, in the, the design of it that will uh, maybe prevent it from rolling over if it is installed backwards. Uh, often the case in a V8 engine or a V6 engine where if where the because you have two connecting rods bolted together um, one may not allow it to turn if the if it is installed backwards one more style of piston that I wanted to uh, to describe or, or let you know about um, we talked about a full floating wrist pin all right, and now the connecting rod is not here, but a full floating wrist pin uh, has movement between it and the piston and movement between the uh, wrist pin and the small end of the connecting rod. The style I wanted to talk about is called a crosshead piston. And it's slightly different in that when you look at this, it's sometimes also, if you want to refer to it as a uh, semi-floating wrist pin. I'm going to take it apart and show you what it is. And while I'm trying to get the bolts out of here, I will tell you that this was a uh, Detroit design and they referred to this as a crosshead piston. So, what you can see is that we have two bolts 
that go through the connecting rod and into two threaded holes in the wrist pin. The wrist pin is then fastened securely to the connecting rod but is allow allowed to rotate on the bosses of the piston. It also holds the skirt in place which makes it another variety of an articulating piston when it's all together. Um, this connecting rod has a center hole drilled in it. It is a rifle drilled hole which allows oil to flow from the hole that's in the big end and, then, and connected to the crankshaft up through here. This one's a little uh, nice to, to see too. You can see what they have done in the I-beam of the uh, connecting rod is they've actually allowed a little bit of extra material and that is so that even though we have uh, where we have the hole relief on drilled up through here that there is some extra material to keep the strength of that connecting rod there. 